I want to welcome you guys back again. Um, I think a few weeks, about a week ago, I promised that I was going to continue with the study of this this book of um, Danny. Time has come. So what we're going to do in this chapter, we're going to talk about the training that Daniel and his friends received um, while they were in Babylon. They were chosen for special studies to serve the king in the palace. And um, it also detailed the initial challenges that they faced, the choices that they had to make. And it also set a precedence in their lives for the future challenges that they would face throughout the 70 years while they were in Babylon. So in the first year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and Jerusalem and besieged him. Okay, so it is necessary for us to understand the historical settings because the prophet Daniel is a very meticulous person. He wrote down dates and times. And this really makes the book of Daniel very historical full of rich history. And the third year of Jehoiakim's reign would be about 605 BC. In the parallel accounts found in 2 Kings 24, 1 and 2, and 2 Chronicles 36, 5 and 7, and it confirmed, therefore, that what he wrote about Jehoiakim is very accurate. Let's talk a little bit about King Nebuchadnezzar. The name Nebuchadnezzar means Nabu has protected my inheritance. And it comes from the word Nabu, one of the Babylonian gods. Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful of the Babylonian king. God used him. It was God who allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come. He was a servant doing the bidding of the master. Just like how he commanded the whale to swallow Jonah. And he commanded the widow to feed Elijah. And he commanded the raven to feed Elijah as well. So, how does this apply to us? If affliction strikes, I need to analyze my life to see what I have done wrong. And if my analysis tells me that I have consciously done nothing wrong, then the enemy is striking. And if the enemy is striking, a door has been opened. If it's none of those, then there's a third option. And the third option is this. If God is my protector and it happens, then God permits it. I will have to go through the journey until the trial passes away. Just like Job. Job went through the suffering for about one year. He lost his children. He lost his wife. He lost his wealth. He was despised. But in the end, he was the victim. Verse 2, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, the part of the vessel of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, the house of his God, and he brought vessels, the vessels in the treasure house of his God. So this is Nebuchadnezzar still working here. So what did he do? The Lord gave Jehoiakim into his hand. Nebuchadnezzar could not have taken Jerusalem taken the king and taken the children of Israel, Judah, without God's permission. There were three deportations, and this was the first of them. It took place in 605 BC, where Daniel and his friends were taken captive with some of the Jews. The second one took place in 597 BC, where Jehoiakim was taken captive. He was king at the time. Ezekiel was taken captive and Jews were taken captive. Third was Zedekiah, the place in 586 BC where Jerusalem was destroyed. So over a period of 19 years, the deportation took place. However, the captivity really started in 605 BC. According to Jeremiah 52, 4,600 Jews were taken. Israel was warned by God days of captivity and dispersion in the past. And that if they turned away from following him, this was what was going to happen. 
This is written in the book of Deuteronomy 15, 6, 15 through 68. And it came to pass. They did not take heed to the word of God. So God's chastisement is always corrected towards restoration. This is no different. In the end, they will be restored. Now, why were they forsaken by God? Seven reasons. Number one, Jehoiakim taxed the land in proportion to their wealth and paid it as a tribute to Pharaoh. We find this in 2 Kings 23, 35 through 37. He taxed the people beyond normal. He pers they forsook, this is number two, they forsook God's law and ignored his covenants, Isaiah 24, 1 through 6. Number three, they ignore the Sabbath day and the sabbatical year. Jeremiah 34, 12 through 22. The land was supposed to rest and replenish. So one of the things that the Lord said to them was that the land was going to keep its Sabbath for 70 years, which is 10 sabbatical years. Number four, idolatry. First Kings 11, 5, chapter 12, 28, chapter 16, 31. And chapter 18, verse 19, 2 Kings 21, 3 through 5, and 2 Chronicles 28, 2 through 3. All of these scriptures detail clearly how the kings of Israel and Judah led their people into worshiping idols. Number 5, the sin of Manasseh, 2 Kings 24, 1 through 3, and 2 Kings 21, 2 through 9. He practiced idolatry and sauce. He participated in enchantments, divination, and consulting media. He did worse than his father. These are the very same things that God despises. And it's happening today. It's happening today. There is no new thing under the sun. It's happening in the church room. The false prophets were doing this. Money, merchandise out of the people, the miracles in the church. Pull people to the church and to get large congregations. All of this is for now. It has been revealed. But God is going to deal with it. Amen. The enemy is not afraid of crowds. What he's afraid of is a praying person. A fasting person. A person who is upright for God. A person who can, can affect the spiritual realm. Shape the spiritual realm. That's what he's Amen. When you get into things like this that Manasseh got into, you have become a captive of Satan. And this is exactly what happened to the children of Israel. The enemy dominated the land. So these things have been going on for a long time. Number six, the shedding of innocent blood. Second Kings 24, 4. One of the reasons for the coronavirus in 2020, the Lord has revealed that it was because of abortion, the shedding of innocent blood. And number seven, King Ezekiah boasted about his wealth. King Nebuchadnezzar came to visit him in 2 Kings 10, verses, 2 Kings 20, I'm sorry, verses 13 through 18. For these seven reasons, the Lord turned them into the hands of their enemies. Therefore, God lamented that the people did those things. In Isaiah 1, verses 4 through 6. And this is what he said. Alas, a sinful nation. People weigh down with iniquity. Offspring of evildoers. Sons who act corruptly. They have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away from him. Where will you be stricken again? As you continue in your rebellion. The whole head is sick. Whole heart is thing. Sole of the foot, even to the head, there is nothing sounding, only bruises, welts, and raw wound, not pressed out of bandage, nor softened. So even after the Lord sent his people into captivity, he lamented for them. This is how much he loves us. He doesn't want to punish us, he doesn't want the enemy to come in and destroy us and do whatever he wants. He wants us to do right. But he also knows that all of this is in our hands. It's our choice whether or not to do right. Or not. We obey what he says. 
then will he be able to protect us. Daniel visited our teacher, a spiritual father, and said to him, while the Lord was teaching us this book, he said that he lived for 70 years in Babylon. The conditions were not good. They were not treated well. Every day they lamented for disobeying and for turning their backs against God. My brothers and sisters, that's the price we pay for disobedience. So, let us examine ourselves. If we find ourselves in a similar situation, just simply fell on the face. Humble ourselves and repent before God. And he will restore. Amen? So, the first captivity. Beginning of Jeremiah's 70-year captivity prophecy, which we see in Jeremiah 25, 11. He says, this whole land will be a desolation and a horror. These nations will serve the king of Babylon 70 years. So let's look at the timeline here for the 70 year captivity. The first captivity that we said began 605 BC. This was the third year of Jehoiakim, and Daniel, his three friends, and other Jews were taken into captivity. The second captivity took place 597 BC. Ezekiel was taken captive. This was the first year of Jehoiakim, which is Jehoiakim's brother. And after that, 586 BC, uh, the third captivity took place. This was the 11th year of Zedekiah, at which time Jerusalem fell. Zedekiah was taken in chains into Babylon. So that's the period of 19 years. First, second and third captivity took a period of 19 years. And in 539 BC, Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians. And Darius became king. Three years later, 536 BC, Cyrus came on the scene. And he decreed the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. And then one year later, in 535 B.C., Zerubbabel and the high priest Joshua returned to Jerusalem to start the rebuilding of the temple. The 70 year captivity ended. A similar thing happened um, in 2017. I'm just going to talk about it for a little bit here. I also wrote it in the book that the Lord assigned me to write. The book is called Kingdom at Hand was in 2017. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the fact that after the um, the years of captivity, when Israel was kicked out of the land, after the second temple was destroyed, they came back and they received their independence in 1947. Actually, it was initiated in 1947. But the independence was actually um, celebrated in 1948. And in 2017, the Lord spoke to my spiritual father and told him to get ready um, to meet with the Lord. And right after that, he was taken in the spirit and into the heavenly realm where the Lord Jesus assigned Jeremiah to teach him about the 70 years. Now, one of the things you're going to notice, especially in this book, the number 70, keep repeating yourself, keep repeating yourself. There we have a 70-year captivity for Babylon. But then, did you know that Jerusalem was once again in a 70-year captivity? I mean, technically, they were. Because from 1947 to 2017, 70 years, the Lord told Prophet Jeremiah teach my spiritual father about 70 years. And he began to teach him that 2017, 70 years since Israel became a nation again. From that point, things were going to happen. Shift in the world. Very same year, President Trump was inaugurated as the President of the United States. Not many days hence, he announced that the United States of America would move their embassy, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, 
Nobody understood it. I did not understand it until later on. The Lord brought it to my spirit. The reason for that was for bringing favor back to Jerusalem again. To set up the rebuilding of the third. My brothers and sisters, there will be a third temple built in Jerusalem. President Trump was appointed initiate. Before it could happen, Jerusalem had to become the capital of Israel again. And the reason I brought this up, because I notice in this writing here, it says the first year of Cyrus was 536 BC. President Trump acted like a Cyrus. Nobody understood it. Amidst all the confusion and everything that went on, God chose him to the bed. He acted like the Cyrus. So the foundation has been laid for the rebuilding of the third temple. Brothers and sisters, when this begins, it will be the greatest sign in history that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. So I talk more about it in the message. If you want to know more, go and get the book. Go get it because God has revealed this to us clearly. It's also in the book of Revelation. It has to do with another 70 prophecy called a 70 weeks prophecy, which I am going to bring out in this book as we go along. This is why this book is so critical. This book goes in conjunction with the text revelation. You cannot understand with one without the other. They are twin The mysteries that are unveiled in the book of Revelation, a lot of the interpretations are in the book of Daniel. And the mysteries that are unveiled in the book of Daniel, revelations about it and understandings about it are in the book of Revelation. I used to wonder why the book of Revelation is called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. But I'll just reveal that to me. It's because it's a mystical book. It's a book that's full of mystery. So in order for us to understand the book of Revelation, it has to be unveiled. It has to be revealed by the Spirit of Revelation. The Spirit of Wisdom and the so Revelation is a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mystical hidden things about the Lord Jesus Christ that was not revealed when he walked the earth. Amen? So God is saying, teach it now. Teach it now. I hope you are listening. Church. He who has ears to hear, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. Absolutely, I am so sure of Amen. The fact that you found this channel is not by change. I have nothing to gain by teaching you. The Lord has given me a mandate. He has taught me the Spirit of the Father. He has come. He has taught us the book of Revelation. He has taught us the book of Daniel. There's another thing that he taught us called the journey. I'm going to go through that as well. Because another thing that the Lord said is that the church will once again go through the wilderness. Took us through a series of books that teach us about the mistakes that Israel made. And he said, we should take heed to these mistakes to ensure that we don't make the same mistakes that they made. And I have the word now. I hope you listen. So let's get back. Let's get, I don't want to get carried away because there is so much, so much stuff. 